All right, so welcome everybody to the workshop, Capturing the Hearts of Boys and Girls. And so what we're gonna be looking at today is what role does gender play in discipleship and how does it impact ministry? Now, who here has heard of the uh, Bible study or book, Love and Respect? Have you ever heard of that? Um, or Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage? Have you heard of the book, uh, Girls Are Spaghetti, Boys Are Waffles? Okay, so there's all of this research and all of these books and Bible studies have been written that address that how men and women think differently. And, and they're focused on either marriage or they're focused on dating for teenagers. What we forget is that many people have focused over the years on learning modalities, creative presentation techniques, classroom setup and discipline as means to ensure maximum learning is taking place. But we forget that our boys and girls are little men and women. And they were created differently. They're created to think differently. They are created to, um, to just be. They're different beings. Um, so little research has been done on the impact of gender in our classrooms until recently. In this session, we're going to outline the different needs and opportunities that gender, that each gender has and how the church is uniquely positioned to meet those needs. There's going to be some, op some, um, some opportunity for you guys to chat amongst yourselves and talk about some things. So if you don't know your neighbor, you're going to get to know them pretty quickly. Um, so we're going to look at understanding the difference between the genders the unique opportunities and, and challenges that each gender faces in our society and how best to create a ministry environment to help those young boys and girls mature into godly men and women. Okay, so <clears throat> the first thing we're going to do, let's, I think I need to go to the next slide. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do, we're gonna, I want you to get in a group of no more than three, okay? So you're going to need to, to come together in a group. Here's what I want you to think about. Um, what I would like for you to do is I want you to start thinking about how would you describe boys? What are some things that you would say are specific and unique to boys? You're going to take about, about 60 seconds to just quickly discuss that, and then I want you to share a few things you come up with. What would you say is unique about boys? What is unique about boys specifically? Some things maybe you've noticed in your ministry or in your own house. Okay, so what are some of the responses you guys came up with? What are some things that are unique about boys? They're very active, right? Getting them to sit down and pay attention is, is difficult. They're very active. What else? Easily distractible, yes. What else? I think they're really hyper focused on something that they really like, something that they mm -hmm. really want, and they can almost get like a tunnel vision. Uh -huh. They are, they get hyper focused. They focus in on one thing. And that's what they're going to focus on. And they, it, it, it's when you've got their attention, they are easily distracted. But when you have their attention. They are zoned in until they are done. That's right. Okay, so let's do the same thing with girls. Next slide, please. Um, how would you describe girls? That's unique to girls. Let's take about 60 seconds, and then I'll ask you for responses. Okay, so let's share about girls. Tell me something that's unique about girls. More verbal. Yes. Yes. What else? More sentimental and sensitive. Okay. What else? They can be little organizers. They want everything compartmentalized, they want to run a certain way, they just, I mean, to the point of being real bossy. They like to be organizers. It's seen as bossy. They like to be organized. They want things done a certain way. That's great. That's great. Yes, that is true. If things don't go their way, it can be catastrophic. All right. Um, so one obvious difference about boys and girls, I want you to think about this. When a girl goes to brush her teeth and the toothpaste falls off, what does she do? 
She puts the toothpaste, falls off the toothbrush. What does she do? She's going to get new toothpaste, right? A boy goes to brush his teeth. Toothpaste falls off. Okay, you guys are laughing. What are they going to do? Grab it out of the sink. <laughs> so we can all agree. <laughs> there we go. Uh, we all agree. I think we'd all agree that God made men and women and called it very good. He fully understood all of the differences and uniquenesses about them. When we look at gender differences, we must be cautious not to fall into the trap of thinking of one gender as superior over the other. While both have their strengths and their weaknesses, it is these differences that God blessed. We may find certain teaching and training techniques as being more aligned with our personality or understanding of growth, but both male and female are valued and precious in his sight. It's my hope today that the content of this session will help you better know how to create environments where you can disciple and mentor boys and girls how God designed them. Let's look at this quote here. It says, to capture the hearts of boys and girls, we must understand their God-given uniqueness. Okay? So the first thing that we're going to look at is what is gender specific? What is gender specific? Before we get into the reasons why every children's ministry should have a gender specific approach to discipling the next generation, let's take a minute to understand what gender specific actually is. First, gender specific is a mindset. Leaders and parents should have an understanding that it's okay to approach discipleship and mentoring different for boys and girls. They know that boys and girls interact differently. Boys and girls will see, or they will see the benefits of having times where boys and girls are separated by gender as well as times that they're combined. Second, gender specific is an environment. Okay, although some programming for genders can be accomplished in um, a co-ed environment, it's critical that at some point the genders be separated for times with leaders of the same gender. This is a time when the content and programming can be made specific for that gender. Activities and objectives can then be customized for the gender. Okay, so, for, so gender specific ministry is a mindset and an environment, if you're following along with your notes. So let's look at five reasons for a gender-specific approach. It's important to understand that ministry that captures the hearts of boys and girls must consider a gender-specific approach to reach maximum effectiveness. This is not to say that co-ed times don't have their place, but the evidence is very strong that each gender will flourish when they are placed into an environment that is tailored specifically for them. So here are the top five reasons for a gender-specific approach to ministry. Reason number one, unique concerns for boys and girls. Now, let's look at boys, first of all. Here are some, some facts about boys. Boys, suicide rate in boys are about 3.5 times higher than in girls. Two, Adolescent boys are more likely to be victims of almost all types of violent crimes. For example, assault, robbery, and homicide. Another unique concern for boys is boys are suffering in school. Um, they get poor grades, lower graduation rates, and lower college attendance. And boys who don't do well in school struggle in life. So non-high school graduates are less likely to have a steady job, and to get married and more likely to get a divorce when they do. Those are some unique concerns for boys. There are unique concerns for girls as well. First of all, girls are more likely to experience depression. 40% of rape victims are between the ages of 14 and 17 years old. Eating disorders are now the third most chronic illness among adolescent girls. And one in three girls has had sex by the age of 16. Two out of three by the time they're 18. These are unique concerns for boys and girls. Churches that have the mindset and environment where these issues are understood and, in, and addressed, 
through God's word and relationship can make a difference, make an impact, significant impact on helping boys and girls thrive in our sin-wrecked culture. So the first thing is, was unique concerns for boys and girls. Second, diminished role models. For girls, in the absence of girls' ministries, girls have less female role models in the church because there are often more male pastors than there are female pastors. Actually, my um, daughter, one of my daughters has a call to ministry, and I asked her, because I'm a children's pastor, so I'm like, she's going to follow my footsteps. It's going to be awesome. She says, I said, well, where do you feel God's calling you to? She says, you know, Mom, I feel like I should go into youth ministry or be a lead pastor because there are so many female children's pastors. But there aren't enough female youth pastors and lead pastors. And that excited me and broke my heart at the same time. Because I was, I, saw, I was so excited that she saw that need. But she was right, and that's what broke my heart. So um, a gender-specific ministry ensures girls have the opportunity to see women in leadership roles. Now, boys have less role models, both at home and school. There are fewer male teachers. In 1981, there, was about eight, there were about 18% of the teachers across the country were male. Um, as of the time of, that these notes were written in 2015, that was 9%. Huge drop. Huge drop. The majority of volunteer teachers in the local church are women, right? Our nursery workers, our children's workers, a lot of them are women. By establishing a gender-specific ministry, boys are assured that the presence of a godly male role model who will mentor and disciple them. Reason number three, boys and girls learn differently. Now, there's a simple acronym that describes how boys and girls different, learn differently. So we're going to start with our boys. And the acronym's really simple, B-O-Y-S spells boys. So we're going to start with B. B is becoming competent. Now, this could be related to confidence. No boy or man wants to fail at anything. My husband won't go to the bank if he doesn't know the account number because in his eyes, if he can't tell the lady exactly what she needs to know, he's failed, right? So part of a learning environment for boys should be crafted around helping them to know that they have the potential to be successful at what is being taught, becoming confident. The O is for order. Now don't confuse order with peace and quiet. If you have been around boys and if you've taught boys, you know there is nothing peaceful and quiet about teaching boys. Instead, order is very similar to consistency, knowing that the leaders can be counted on, that they will be protected and cared for is critical for boys. If a bully shows up, will they dominate the class or do the leaders have it under control? That's what they need to know. The why is for yelling and running. If you have something important to say to a boy, the worst thing you can do is communicate it by saying, now sit down and look me in the eye while I tell you this. Okay? Some of you are laughing because you know you've been there. Rather, conversation will come more readily when it is action involved. Consider allowing them to play a game and then use some questions to process a truth based on the experience from the game. Frequent movement helps boys' brains to remain active. Now, the S is for stretching beyond. Boys have been lazy, have been labeled as lazy because of their affinity for video games. However, boys want to be stretched and they want to be part of something bigger. Often the appeal of video games is so strong because the story of real life has not captured and engaged them to become the, hero, the hero and champion that they want to be. So we need to create environments where boys can practice being the hero. Girls learn very differently than boys. Here are some girls learning attributes um, using the acronym G-I-R-L-S. That one's easy, right? Girls. G stands for greater sensory intake. Learning environments where touch, taste, and sight are immersive to reinforce the content will help girls thrive. I is for inductive thinking. When leaders challenge girls to think of specific examples, it will help them learn the general principles of the associated topic. Likewise, it's important to provide specific examples to illustrate the general principles that are being taught. R, real life application. 
Group projects where opportunities to, are provided for girls to live out what they learn is very important. If you teach about compassion, consider discussing opportunities for the groups to show compassion in the community or in the near future. L is for love and acceptance. It's important that every girl feel love and acceptance. There can be no place for condescending talk, bullying, or allowing girls to be marginalized. Care must be taken to create a safe environment for expression. Until a leader has reached a girl's heart, the teacher will have little impact on her mind and her soul. The S is for speaking. Girls love to talk. We said that earlier. Be sure to allow them to process verbally. If the group is large, you might want to consider breaking down into smaller groups so that they can talk. More girls can talk at one time. This helps those who are shy to speak up and those who are dominant not to overpower the entire room. Now, since boys and girls learn differently, both genders may not learn optimally in a co-ed environment. This is important consideration as many small churches have less time to disciple children due to eliminating midweek services and Sunday school. Since churches may have only one contact with children each week, this time needs to be maximized for the most effective teaching. Now, here's a note. All techniques can be used for either gender to heighten the stickiness of the lesson. This content is designed to show gender preferences. Now, we're not saying that you can only teach boys this way or you can only teach girls this way. You can use methods for, those, for each gender for the opposite gender, and it's going to help the lesson to stick. What we're saying is there are preferred methods that, that boys and girls learn. So number four, um, separate topics and approach to mentoring. So this is number four on the five reasons for gender-specific um, ministry. Separate topics and approach to mentoring. Co-ed settings are not conducive or sufficient for expressing concerns noted in boys and girls, such as sexual and emotional. Um, oftentimes when we're in a co-ed environment, we just don't touch those topics, right? Those are taboo. We don't touch, we don't talk about emotional stuff, we don't talk about sexual stuff because it's not appropriate when you're in a co-ed environment. Mentoring relationships are not fostered effectively though without small groups and gender specific settings. So you need to have separate topics for boys and girls. Girls generally center around self-value, self-image, and their interpersonal relationships. Boys, on the other hand, generally center around issues related to authority and, mature, and maturing into godly men. So if you look at the next slide and look in your notes on the very back page, there's a chart there of separate topics for boys and girls. Um, we don't have time to go through each one of those today, but that's, well, you can have that for reference. Um, but it tells you here are some things that, that girls really, um, topics that, that girls need to, you need to address with girls and topics to address with boys. So you can look at that, um, that later when you're done here. Um, so number five on the reasons for gender specific ministry, classroom management benefits. Classroom management benefits. Now these benefits have already been documented in single gender classrooms within the public school systems. The church could also see these benefits in our discipleship efforts through gender specific ministries. Now one word of caution. The reason for implementing a gender-specific ministry must not be driven by separating one disruptive gender from the other. It needs to be done for the right motives. Often, this often results in seeing some benefit because of the single gender environment, but unless the leadership maximizes the mentality and the environment of gender-specific setting, the full benefits will not be realized. So we're not going to separate kids just because one group is pestering the other group or one group is rather than the other group. So here are some of the classroom benefits that would be experienced, that would be experienced by separating and having gender-specific. First of all, Reduce distractions, flirting, sexual tension, yes, even in kids, gender-based competitions, they will be reduced or even eliminated. These, this results in increased ability, increased ability to focus and concentrate. I've seen that when we do gender-specific events at our church, if we have a sleepover event or a camp out, you will find that girls can be girls and boys can be boys and they're not worried about what the other gender thinks. Even our young girls deal with that. The other benefit is open discussion. 
open discussion. Both genders are more open to discussing personal issues in a gender-specific environment, and this allows leaders to spot and address potentially damaging issues later in life. Another benefit is strong mentoring relationships. When men and boys, women and girls interact, they have the ability to foster strong relationships as God has intended. In our world of gender confusion, boys must see living examples of godly men whom they respect. In the same manner, girls should be aspiring to model their lives after the godly women in their life. Another classroom benefit is camaraderie is built. When boys have a connection with one another, positive peer pressure can assist that classroom environment. And also, another benefit, response time is equalized. Studies show that girls are often called on more than boys because they process faster and they can give you an answer faster. They can respond more quickly. In a gender-specific environment, though, Boys are given the time they need because they're all answering pretty much the same speed, and girls are able to answer um, to the teacher's questions as well. Do you guys understand all that? I know we're going through a lot of information really fast. So any questions so far? Okay. So here's five reasons for me, 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 uh, gender specific ministry. Just a review. Here we go. Um, I actually need you to get your, you're going to get your groups. I want you to look at these five reasons, unique concerns for boys and girls, diminished role models, boys and girls learn differently, separate topics and approach to mentoring, and classroom management benefits. I want you in your group to discuss, again, just one minute, super quick, um, what, which of these five reasons would be the quickest for your church to implement or to address? Which of these five things do you think you could address immediately? Like you go back Sunday morning and here's what you're going to do. You're going you're to fix one of these things. What is one of the things that you can do? Talk about that as a group. Ten more seconds. Yeah. All right, I hear some good discussion going on. So, what are some things that you came up with that you could actually um, address right away? Classroom management. Okay. What else? Diminished role models. Diminished role models. That's a hard one, but also an easy one. I mean, it's simple as putting men into the classrooms that don't have any men, but sometimes it's finding the men. <laughs> That'll serve. <laughs> what else? I mean, smaller, small groups. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe it's just um, gender specific, so you can ask those specific questions that relate to each gender. Yeah, something as simple as if you break up into small groups already in your classroom, even on just a Sunday morning, breaking them up by gender rather than just by age group or whatever. Yeah, that's super simple. So um, think about that as you go back. I know we're going to go back. The thing about coming to Fusion is you come up with all these ideas. And so you've got to kind of pick what to implement. That's why I asked you for one thing. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is six components of, gender, of effective gender-specific ministry. Okay. First of all, discipleship and leadership training for your leaders. Now, in order to have an effective gender-specific ministry, church leaders have to understand the role of ongoing training for those who serve. 
Now, as a rule of thumb, when you do training with your leaders, now I don't know how many of you um, listening to this or here are in charge of the ministry at your church or if you are um, one of the lay leaders. The thing is, is that when you do a training of some kind, the rule of thumb is 90% of the training should be focused on spiritual growth of the leader and current struggles that children face. The remaining 10% use that for program and cultural development of the program or continue development of the program. Now, other topics of importance include role modeling, accountability, bonding, and a current discipleship pathway. We must understand that as early as high school and all the way through adulthood, people should be taught the importance of discipleship to the next generation. A church will find using a wide variety of formats is beneficial. Okay, the second component is small groups. We've talked about that a little bit already. Um, some of you said that was a great, a great thing that you could do is just break them into small groups. A mentorship relationship can only be formed in small groups, and mentoring is a necessary outcome of boys and girls ministry. Small groups facilitate unique envi environments. Boys need a very active environment. Girls need plenty of conversation. Some aspects of discipleship can only occur in small groups, like answering questions, asking questions, accountability, and the feeling of belonging. Now, the third component of an effective gender-specific ministry is current and relevant. Although all church ministries should strive to remain relevant to the culture in which they minister, those working in a gender-specific environment have a unique opportunity. Often, boys and girls will respond differently to current issues that are taking place. As a result, discipleship content, imagery, activities, etc., can take a different form when you're in a combined setting. Postmoderns are image driven. They are image driven, so branding and appealing content and graphics are so important. The what is more important to boys than girls. Girls highly value relationships and the opportunity to communicate, so simply being together meets a girl's needs. Boys care about what's being taught. Relevance of content is very important to boys' ministry. Current awareness, awareness of current social issues and how to provide godly counsel for those issues is very important. Leaders need to utilize updated, updated methods and technology as well. Now, a fourth way for creating an effective gender-specific um, ministry is events. Events can serve multiple purposes in a church-based gender-specific ministry. First of all, they create momentum. Promotion and planning of events um, create excitement about the ministry. When done well, adults and kids experience a win that creates a desire for more. They help to build teams. As children, youth, and young adults start working together to plan and execute events, it helps them to be part of, to feel like they're part of something bigger. So you can consider using leaders um, as participants. Use your kids and your youth to help you assist in the planning. Also, events contribute to church growth. <coughs> One of the key focuses of any event should be the opportunity for people to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. They are also great opportunities to begin bringing people to the life of the church. Number five, an effective um, gender-specific ministry, numerous stakeholders. Numerous stakeholders. As the number of key stakeholders in the church increases, so does the sense, uh, or so does the ease which preparation and longevity of effectiveness. But it's not enough that a large number of, um, it's not enough that your leaders get involved, but a large number of parents don't realize how important gender-specific ministry is. We need to get them passionate about it as well. Now, some of the leaders you need to include are your youth pastors um, and uh, children's pastor, your lead pastor, their spouses, the men's and women's ministry directors, and parents so they can see the value of gender-specific ministry. Number six, and we're going to have to stop here because I think we're out of time, um, holistic. Church leaders should be cautioned about falling into a rut of activity that begins to limit their effectiveness of mentoring and discipleship. A strong gender-specific ministry understands that kids are not one-dimensional beings. They have five different ways that they grow, spiritually, relation relationally, intellectually, emotionally, and physically. We need to address the whole child, not just one aspect of them. So there's another chart, if you'll um, look on the back of your notes, um, that is characteristics of effective curriculum. You guys can look at that in your free time. Now, there are some next steps there as well. I'm just going to list them out real quick. Um, 
so that you can fill in the blanks because I know some people love to have every blank filled. So number one, speak to the future. Number two, train your leaders. Number three, have intentional gender models. Number four, encourage longevity. And number five, have appropriate resources. Now, here's the deal. I'm going to fess up completely, and I'm going to tell you, I did not create the content for today's um, workshop. This is all available to you, PowerPoints, um, work, uh, presenter notes, worksheets that you guys are filling out, all of it. So if you want to take it back to your church and do this with your leadership and the people in your church, you can just write this down, mentoring kids, mentoring kids, M-E-N-T-O-R-I-N-G-K-I-D-S, no fancy spelling with Z's or anything like that, mentoringkids.ag.org. All of this has been prepared by My Healthy Church and the people at the national office to be able to equip um, uh, lay leaders and volunteers and children's pastors and pastors in general to um, connect and see the significance of gender-specific ministry. So I want to thank you guys. I know that we are out of time. I will be at the girls' ministries table if you have any questions about the content or about what we talked about today or if you just want to challenge me.